the Refectory Restaurant, which really is another um, just amazing Columbus institution. Um, the Refectory is probably the, the pinnacle of fine dining um, in Columbus. Um, if you want that really kind of polished, um, very attentive white tablecloth experience, I don't think there's anywhere um, you know, finer than the Refectory. Um, they're very well known for their, their wine list, for their French chef, um, for the history of the building and a lot of the special events they do with music. Um, and so we're heading up there onto Bethel Road. So we are here at the beautiful refectory restaurant on Bethel Road with Kamal Boulos, who is the owner, um, who has been at the refectory for a long time, since before he was the owner, he originally started as a chef. Um, so he has a lot of history with this and he's gonna tell us about the refectory. The restaurant has been open for 43 years and I've been here for 42 of those years and been very fortunate to work uh, for two partnerships. Uh, one that had it from 76 till 80 and the second partnership from 81 to 91 and then they sold it to me in 1991 and I've been the owner since that time. Uh, our chef has been with us for 27 years uh, since 1992. Um, our business manager Sandra has been with us for 40 years and our current general manager uh, has been with us for 18 years. Uh, left for 15 and then came back three years ago. And uh, so we're fortunate to have a continuity of staff. Uh, and in fact, our previous general manager who passed away three years ago was here for 37 years. And it's really those people that have uh, empowered us and er or enabled us to really be where we are today. Um, to have a restaurant that is, uh, has just been really in business that long and has still been a vibrant part of the, of the culinary scene in Columbus. The history of the building uh, dates back much further than that. It was actually built in the 1850s. Um, and from the 1850s till the 1960s, it was a church with an adjacent uh, one-room schoolhouse, brick schoolhouse that the church purchased and eventually connected uh, with two wings of the building. Uh, and then um, after the 1960s or so, the building sat vacant here for a number of years, but the church actually just moved up the street. They just celebrated their 175th year as a church, the Bethel Road International um, Methodist Church. And um, so they're still around. And then um, we're really excited and fortunate to not only be in this physical facility because it gives us a very unique uh, history as well as a very unique ambiance in terms of the architecture and that sort of thing. And so as a dining uh, restaurant or a destination, if you will, uh, we try to create a sanctuary uh, where you have a chance to relax and enjoy a number of courses if you desire and uh, not be rushed in any way and uh, you have a chance to converse because it's not a loud place you don't have to shout over the table uh, so we really try and create a very unhurried dining experience and uh, try to pursue obviously a very high level of the quality and creativity of the cuisine uh, the high level of attentive service yet it's not overbearing uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Chris Dillman, our sommelier, uh, who is extraordinary, so he's taken our wine program to a very high level. Uh, he's won the top sommelier competition in Chicago for in, in the Midwest region a few times. And uh, also our spirits uh, program is, 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 again, just uh, on a high level of excellence as well. You can come in and dine in a very casual way in the bistro. It's three courses. Um, with several selections in each course to choose from, which changes every week to two weeks for $30 per guest. It's a great way to just experience a, an example of what the fine dining menu can be um, and uh, just enjoy an ever-changing menu. So that menu is posted regularly on the website. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 5.30 to 8.30, Friday and Saturday, 5 to 5.45. So an early dining menu just on the weekend. But it's a great value. You can enjoy just being at the bar, enjoy some of the uh, reduced drink prices that we have during happy hour, or some of the appetizers that we have at reduced prices as well. Uh, we have a wine retail shop. Uh, so if you're interested in wine, uh, you can just drop by, uh, 
Saturdays, every Saturday from 12 to 3. Uh, 12 to 15 dollars per guest. We put out a little bit of cheese. You can sample five or six wines and purchase them for retail. No reservations necessary. Uh, if you're interested in wine, taking it to the next level, uh, by all means get on our email guest list and we have wine tastings, sampling 10 wines for 15 dollars or perhaps uh, a multi-course sit-down winemaker type dinner or sommelier type dinner where we match the wines and foods together. And we also do spirits events that are similar. Uh, in top of that, uh, we have a dinner music event uh, where we have a four course dinner and a show um, from six to nine. And uh, we do over a hundred of those events per year. Uh, jazz, bluegrass, events with pro music, a string quartet, the symphony, the opera. So we have virtually every genre of music covered. Uh, incredible local artists as well ama as amazing um, national and international touring artists. Uh, and that's only limited to 40 guests in our upstairs private dining room. And then last but not least, but really the main part of the refectory is the ever-changing uh, dining room menu. Uh, so you can come and spontaneously enjoy a multi-course menu that uh, the chef and I or the server can help put together or just order from the dining room menu as is. Um, and it changes, you know, uh, three or four or five times a year seasonally. And it's just extraordinary. Uh, I mean, you will just be uh, treated to a a, an array of appetizers and hors d'oeuvres, both hot and cold hors d'oeuvres, uh, incredible seafood as well as uh, meat dishes uh, that we bring in seasonally. We do a lot of things with game as well. Uh, we'll have some things like ostrich or bison or squab and just really interesting things that you just wouldn't ordinarily find in other restaurants. And then we have a full-time pastry chef as well. So uh, that really encompasses the, the, the spectrum of things that you can enjoy here at the restaurant. And um, we also, again, as I mentioned, try to uh, pair wines with your dinner. The sommelier will work with you when you're here dining uh, to help you perhaps select a wine that would be a little different for you or uh, really create a good value for you as well. It's Friday menu. And Chef Richard Blondin has been with us, as I mentioned, for 27 years. Amazing. Uh, every few weeks I'll see him do something he's never done before. And the first Friday menu he prepares a limited number of those depending on the reservation sometimes 25 or 35 so you have to ask for them in advance sometimes he has a few extra but it's a four course menu and we have an optional wine pairing and it's typically 65 dollars per guest and it's just amazing i mean he really sort of steps up the creativity on that because you know the entire kitchen staff can just focus on doing 25 or 30 of them and without necessarily having to put them in production each day and it's just a, a really extraordinary menu. In fact, there are guests that come in just every month just for that menu. And it's got its sort of its own following because it's a great value as well. We're very fortunate to have Chef Richard Blondin uh, be our executive chef for the last uh, 27 years. And um, he's like a culinary athlete. I mean, he is just uh, incredibly creative and every few weeks he'll do something he's never done before. And so uh, he uh, grew up in France, trained in France with uh, Pierre Orsi and Paul Bocuse. And so take it away, Chef. Tell us what we have here. Okay. <laughs> this is a uh, t tuna and salmon gravelax. Uh, passion, I'm sorry, uh, saffron vinaigrette beet vinaigrette, uh, green bean, heruga caviar, champagne vinaigrette, and chive oil. So pretty. And this is pea shoots. And we cure the uh, yes. salmon here ourselves. Yeah. And, and the tuna. <laughs> this is the beef carpaccio with a parmesan twill, carrot lace, microgreen, and chive oil. And uh, the little uh, oil on the uh, beef, it's uh, banyuls and uh, lemon juice and olive oil. Banyuls is a wine from the south of France. This is the pear tart. This is why people are coming here for. <laughs> we can never take this off the <laughs> no. dessert list, by the way. Uh, it's a pear tart with a pistachio frangipan, pistachio ice cream, uh, mango, raspberry, coulis, and creme anglaise. And finally, this is the 
a carrot and chestnut gateau with uh, as you see the bottom is the carrot cake and then we have some uh, chestnut buttercream and chestnut mousse the whole chestnut on top and caramel and uh, creme anglaise voila <laughs> bon appétit <laughs> Lamb, it's a uh, uh, New Zealand baby rack of lamb, and uh, it's a lamb jus with rosemary and garlic, um, garnish with some uh, blue potatoes, a uh, green zucchini and yellow zucchini tian, some uh, carrot à l'orange, and uh, some fresh. Uh, Sprigs from from the garden. <laughs> how do you stay fresh, having been had such a long career? How do you keep your passion and new ideas? Uh, it is uh, challenging, uh, but uh, it's always something. Uh, the farmer walks in with a new vegetable, with something new, so uh, it, bring, it gives you some ideas. Magazines, books, uh, talking with other people. Um, even walking the dog, sometimes you, know, you see the frogs with the duck. Hey, <laughs> put them together on the plate. <laughs> Why not? I do have a lot of farmers. They're bringing a lot of different things, and uh, there is uh, some farmer. They also ask if I want a specific something, then they will grow it just for me. So that's uh, that's nice. Yeah. And I do have a few things on the list, but. Uh, um, I'm not sure the, the Ohio climate and uh, the soil will be working out, but mm -hmm. we'll find out. This is walleye and salmon together, and it's wrapped with a brick dough. And uh, in between, uh, between the walleye and the salmon, there's a little bit of pistachio. Also, the sauce, it's a pistachio vin blanc. Here we have a little... Uh, a brochette of uh, two kinds of uh, seafood mousse. One is walleye, one is salmon. So textures are different with the men peas and the little garnish. Uh, snow peas and uh, some uh, green bean wrapped with a uh, carrot and a bur uh, bell pepper burr monte. Garnish with basil, and this is a red sorrel, also a roasted tomato. As you see, it has a little pistachio in there too. And some rice. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in that there's place. There's a lot right? of elements. <laughs> well, this is a classic. Uh, vanilla creme brulee. Uh, this is the original uh, recipe from uh, Paul Bocuse restaurant, uh, where the creme brulee was pretty much born. Um, I brought this bag with me when I moved to the United States and uh, we still have it today at the refectory. So uh, this recipe uh, was a top secret recipe at that time. I'm talking about 1984 and um, it's not such a top secret anymore as a, <laughs> this thing is served everywhere in the world. It's a classic but, uh, but people don't get tired of it. What does the next decade look like for you, for the refectory, for this team? Well, that's a tough one. That is tough. Uh, yeah. Next 10 years look like the past 27 to me. It's, <laughs> it's going to look like that, no? Uh, there, is, uh, there is some construction maybe and uh, some mild changes, but I don't see anything big. Yeah. Do you? Well, you know, we're constantly evolving and growing and trying to sort of take his culinary genius and package it together and present it in a variety of different ways for guests. Uh, so, yeah, we are building a, uh, a, a free built, a free standing building on the patio area, which will have glass on three and a half sides. So it'll be an event space as well as casual dining. Uh, our catering is growing quite a bit. Um, so now we take this experience to people's homes or offices. Um, that's growing quite a bit. Um, but we're growing it in a way that really makes sense for us. We're not trying to be the biggest. Uh, we're not trying to do a big event. We're not trying to live in the world of 
uh, the wedding markets or different venues. We just try to build relationships with people. And that's really been the joy of this whole journey, is just building relationships uh, with guests, seeing them when they come in early on, uh, watching their kids being born. Now their children are bringing their children. <laughs> it's sort of astounding to me that we're part of that whole journey in their lives. And so uh, we continue to do that uh, and, and hopefully um, uh, try to, in the two or three hours that they're here with us, um, celebrating life in some way, uh, we try to uh, uh, make that experience really uh, a memory for them. So we'll continue to do that and find creative ways of doing that in the years ahead.